Is the 2024 recession canceled? That's what the market move yesterday would have made you think based on the CPI release and a few other things that were really, really important that we're gonna get into in this video. This is a really important video to understand the direction of the consumer, the direction of the Fed, and overall the direction of the market as a result of those two things. So we all know we're in a tight financial conditions time in relation to the past few decades with the high rates that we have in the 5% range. This is putting the consumer in a weak spot. It's making credit very very, very expensive, and it's putting the housing market in a very weak spot. When the consumer's in a bad spot and housing's in a weak spot, that hurts the economy in a major way. And that's why a lot of people have been thinking recession in 2023. It went from early 2023 recession to mid 2023 recession. Now they're saying back half of 2023 recession. And since none of those things have played out, we're now hearing people say 2024 recession is coming. But with the recent CPI that just got released, has that been canceled? Are we changing our mind? Has the recession been canceled altogether now? Are we not even going to get one in 2024? That's what some people were starting to say after the CPI release we just got. So let's dive into the CPI numbers. On a month over month basis, inflation was flat. There was no increase and there was no decrease. That doesn't mean that things didn't get more expensive. That means that things got more expensive at the same rate that they got more expensive last month. So we're still in a cycle of things getting more expensive for the consumer. So let's not get that twisted. Total CPI on a year over year basis was 3.2% increase. And then the core CPI on a year over year basis was a 4% increase. So that's actually a two year low on the core CPI. Remember, core CPI takes out food and energy. With that 4% year over year number, that's the smallest annual increase since September of 2021. That is pretty big, very important. That's why we had the market rallying in a major way. And that was a beat. There was a 4.1 expectation on the core CPI and overall CPI was a beat at the 3.2. Just talking about the core CPI for a second, the Fed target is a 2% inflation rate on an annual basis. So we could look at this in the optimistic light and say, oh, we're only 2% away from the target of 2%. Or you could look at this in the pessimistic light and say, we are 2x of the goal of the Fed. We're not at 2%, we're not at 3%, we're at 4%. We're at double what their goal is on that core CPI still. That is a long ways from 2%. So even if we got a 0.1% drop every single month, month in and month out, as we relate annual basis, that would be 20 months until we get to that Fed target of 2%. Let's say we did really, really, really good and inflation really starts to come down in a major way on the core CPI. And it actually drops when we look at a year over year basis by 0.2%. That's still 10 months before we get to 2%. And to me, I think there's a near 0% chance that the Fed starts to cut rates until we see inflation really, really dang close to 2% on an annual basis. So in the best case scenario, which I don't think is going to happen, I think we have 10 more months of pretty dang high rates. I don't see another rate hike coming, but I do think they're going to just hold the rate steady for quite a long time. What I would like to see them do is keep a real rate of 1%. So what that real rate of 1% would be is we take the CPI number, or maybe we take the core CPI number, and then whatever that CPI number is, 1% above that should be the rate that we hold. Do I think the Fed's going to do that? I'm not sure. I don't think they're going to be that quick to lower rates just to keep it at real rate of 1%. So if we have a 3% inflation rate, what I think would make a lot of sense is to bring the Fed funds rate to around 4%. If we have a 2% inflation rate, it would make a lot of sense to bring the Fed funds rate down to around 3%. That would be great. I don't think they're going to do that. I would love if they did that. I think that would mean a huge rally for the stock market and all of us individuals who own stocks, we would have a nice year next year in 2024 if that's the route they chose to take. But I don't think they're going to choose that path. I think they're going to choose the higher for longer, keep it at this five plus percent rate for quite a while until we see inflation in those twos. And then I think they'll start cutting by 25 or 50 basis points, which is 0.25 or 0.5%. So I don't think we're out of the woods just yet. I don't think the recession is necessarily canceled. The only thing that makes me think there's really, really not going to be a recession is we've had some retail spending numbers looking pretty good from some companies like Amazon and Target have had pretty strong earnings in relation to expectations. I don't think they've been amazing earnings on those retail revenue numbers, but they've been pretty respectable. They've been a a lot less bad than what we thought they were going to be. So we've seen some nice pops into the stock prices. 
that indicates that the consumer is still willing to spend money and the consumer is still in a decent spot with student loans coming back, with Fed rates staying higher for longer, with inflation still increasing. Yes, it's coming down, but that still means things are getting more expensive on a year over year basis, on a month over month basis. That puts pressure on the consumer, especially when credit is tight, especially when home prices are still really, really expensive and the labor market is in jeopardy of weakening. We haven't seen a major weakening in the labor market yet. I hope we don't start to see that. And that's mainly because I want my fellow Americans to be able to stay in a strong financial position, but also because because I'm a stock market investor and I want earnings to be in a great spot. I know if revenues are increasing because consumers are spending more, then earnings are going to be better. And that means good things for stocks over the long term because stocks follow earnings in the long term. So if we have a period of weak earnings, we typically have a period of weak stock price performance. If we have a period of strong earnings, we typically have a period of strong stock price performance. Okay, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Do you think the 2024 recession is for sure going to happen? Do you think it's for sure canceled? or are you somewhere in the middle ground? I want to hear about it. I appreciate you being here in a major way. Hope you got some value out of this video. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day.